We're going to grow out of these sound effects. Nope. I want you to know. We or will. We're going to add to the arsenal. Well, we don't have to. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, we don't have to like, not add Intro to is good. Outro is good. We don't have a live studio audience. We don't have an air horn. Exactly. We don't need it. We don't need that either. Those people are not on the payroll. Those people are me. I mean, I'm a one man band over here. I don't know. Are you okay? You seem grouchy today. I haven't had enough coffee today. Oh, for fair sure. Enough. For sure. Do you remember a couple weeks ago when I introduced to you the changed voices? Yeah, we're not doing that either. Turns out it only works on my microphone. <laughs> like, listen, like I'll, I'll hit the button again and you talk, but you can, you can barely hear it in the background. But when you talk. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't work. That's fantastic. But you can hear me. <laughs> That's even better. <laughs> That can stay. Oh, oh, just me? Yeah, that can stay. Katie. Give me all your money. <laughs> our daughter takes it. That's true. That's true. Speaking of our daughter, if you're watching on YouTube right now, which, by the way, we're available on YouTube. Oh, oh the wrong. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. We're available on YouTube. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> so dumb. We're available on YouTube now. So, But here, but even if you're just listening uh, audio-wise, like on Apple Podcasts, you'll at least be able to hear this. Um, I would like to start on the happiest of notes because you sent me... One of my favorite videos of all time oh my gosh. that She's you've a ever mess. sent. This is our daughter just vibing on the couch here. Yes, and just listen. Just listen. Uh, uh. <laughs> and it goes on from there. But yeah. 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 All good. Anyway, I just wanted to share that story about our daughter or just that video of our because I was uh, I had to uh, yesterday with selling cars. If you have a customer that comes in kind of towards the end of the day, like yesterday, we closed at six o'clock. But these people came in at like five fifteen. They had called me ahead of time, said they were going to be in. So I was like, you know, that's the case. You just you work with them until the deal gets done. Like when a dealership says we close at six, you know. If you get there at 5.30, we can, we, we'll, we're happy to work with you to get a deal done that night. But if you walk in, say, at 6.05, we're going to say, hey, we're closed. Please come back Monday or, right. or, or whatever it is. But um, so I'd worked late Saturday night because I was, I was working on a car deal. And um, I just that that video, I didn't see it until you had sent it while I was in the middle of it. And then so as I was walking to my car to leave for the day, I pulled up my text messages and saw that you sent that. Made my day. So thank you for sending that. You're welcome. That was awesome. Um, you said you, so you obviously Saturdays, I'm at the dealership all day. Mm -hmm. You're home with her. Yep. You like to take her, run her around and you won't tell, you didn't tell me this story oh in gosh, advance, honey. but apparently something was in her diaper bag. What do you got? Well, so here's the deal. It wasn't her diaper bag. It was actually in her daycare bag. So everybody who takes their kid to daycare, you know, you send them with like a bag probably each week. And you know, that bag might have snacks. It might have, uh, you know, like their crib sheets for a nap time or whatever, mm -hmm. a blanket, you know, little things like that. Things that you have to bring them home every week. They got to be washed. Sure. So Friday brought home her daycare bag. I'm taking all the stuff out because Saturday is my, uh, Saturday is my, my laundry day. I do my laundry, I do Chandler's laundry, do everybody's laundry. Mm -hmm. As I'm pulling out all of the, all of Chandler's things. And I, here's the thing. I can't confirm or deny this happened. Cause I don't know. Cause like things get messed up in the shuffle of our tiny laundry room as I'm pulling out all of Chandler's sheets and things to go in the washer. I found a pair of my underwear in her daycare bag. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know. <laughs> That's so gross. I know. Oh, I know. How long do you think they've been in there? I don't know. How long have you been missing those undies? I don't know. Here's the thing. I don't know if, like, maybe they fell in there while I was switching laundry. Because that bag's been in there, like, since Friday night. Like, and I was doing laundry all day on Saturday. So maybe it got, like, it fell in there, like, in the shuffle. Or if it's been in there all week, daycare won't say anything to me. Those women are too kind. They'll be like, they won't, they won't be like, um. Excuse me. Uh, we found a little something in your uh, in your daughter's bag. We don't think she needs this at this time. What What was it? Underwear. Well, like, 
Are we talking? We're not getting into granny the nitty. We're not getting into the nitty gritty. Are we talking underwear. about some That's lacy? a different platform. All right. No, don't, 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 that is for subscribers only. Is that the one that I really like? You have one you really like. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, we're married. <laughs> Say your expectations. Yeah, the, the the days of sexy lingerie have, have have long gone by the wayside. Sorry, mom, if you're listening. <laughs> so yeah, Dang. okay. Let me ask you this. I have questions. So let's really break this down. How when you saw the undies in there, did you did you have like a oh I've been looking for these for a long time, or did you have more of like a um, I. Well, I haven't seen these in forever, or oh, I just saw those last week. What do you think the timeline is? I well, see, that's the whole thing. I don't know because here I have, I'm a creature of habit, so I have multiple pairs of the same kind, same color, same everything. I find something I like, I buy it in bulk. Sure, fruit of the looms, uh, box of briefs, so, absolutely. Yeah, well, well, anyway, so it was one of those where you know regular rotation. Sure. Of the multiple of the same color. Sure. So I don't know if it's been missing for a week or not. It's like when you miss a sock, you find a sock, you have no idea because you've had so many. Usually you buy a sock. The same by white the pack. sock. Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. Interesting. So I Did I you... don't know if they saw it. I don't know if it's been in there all week. That's the problem. Did you. Why do you look concerned? Did you. Do you think she's going to get kicked out? Did you give said undies the um, the smell test? Michael. Like, just to see how dirty they were. Like, we're not like, going into the nitty gritty of the underwear. I told you that. Because, like, if I see an old set of undies or I see some undies sitting on the ground, I'm like, are these clean or dirty? Let me just. Let's just say for the sake that it has to be. Cl- they were they, they were in the laundry room, so they probably had to be clean. Probably. So. That's disgusting. I know. That's hilarious. So that's hilarious. A really good story. I, I, I guarantee I'm probably not the only one that this has happened to. Did you. um? <laughs> But see, I like little surprises like that, even though it's like it's a little embarrassing. And, and God bless you for having the courage to share that on the podcast. That's a brave story. It's relatable. To share. Here's the it's, thing. I'm not the only one. Let's not. Sure. I'm not on an island. All right. Let's. Sure. But isn't that funny? Like, it, like just little surprises like that are so funny, like because they, they just make you laugh. They, they give you this 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 unexpected reaction, you know, like right. the, the reaction. Well, speaking of the reaction. So I I as soon as I. I knew I wanted to tell you, but I'm like, hold on, maybe I should wait to the podcast to get your reaction, right? Mm -hmm. Because I haven't told you. I told you I had a story, but I didn't tell you. I did call my mom and tell her. And she goes, Katie. Oh, I can. You FaceTime your mom every day. I can hear her disappointed reaction. Honey, there's a line. You need to do a really good job of dancing on it. And then you cross it. And I'm like, mom, it's fine. On the last podcast, we talked about my nipples. It was great. (laughs) And she goes, Catherine. (laughs) We talk about inappropriate body parts, but in a very non-sexual way, I feel like. Well, and here's my other thing. So I also think it's a, it's a generational thing. I'm like, mom, I'm, it's real. I'm a mom. You're a mom. It's relatable. She goes, yes, I relate, but I, I don't talk about it. And I'm like, well, that's just the difference. I was like, it's a generational thing. Like now it's like you be open and honest. I mean, we, I'm an open book. I, I probably overshare with everybody. And I mean, but also when you go through all the things that you and I have gone through with the infertility stuff at a later episode, um, nothing's off limits. You've been poked and prodded. And I don't know if just, it's generational or not though. I think it's just, um, I think some people are an open book. Uh, the relationships that you and I both have with my mom compared to your mom, for example, are very different. My mom is hysterically open and honest about everything. Mm-hmm. Very uncomfortable to be her son sometimes. But it, whereas your mom is is very private yeah. and kind of keeps things to herself. So I don't think it's generational. I just think different people are built well, differently. She's o- she's open with me. Like, she's open with me. Right, right. But, right. like, and on this podcast, she would. Yeah, we have like, strangers listening who we've never met who now know that there was – your underwear was in Chandler's uh, daycare bag. That's hilarious. Yeah. But I want I, – I brought that up specifically about the – the um the surprise of, mm-hmm. of you discovering undies in Chandler's diaper bag. It was a little Be- surprised to myself, really. Right. And and how did that feel? How did that feel <laughs> when you when you were when you were surprised and you're like, did you enjoy the cause I'm sure you had a laugh, right? I have a more like a oh no type thing. Right, but you also chuckled. I did. That's funny. That's a funny story. That's like, a funny story. And it was surprising it. and it was unexpected. And that's the best part of a surprise, which brings me to to this you need to get better 
at not trying to ruin surprises. So I, I've, I've thought about this, right? And I realize why I'm like, cause I'm one of those, I was, I shook my Christmas presents as a kid, like surprises. I'm not a fan of for me. And I say that because I am hardwired to do that for other people. I am more of a gift giver. Like my love language is taking care of people and gift giving. Like I take a lot of pride in gift giving and making sure that I buy the best gift for everybody. If I just met you on the street, I'm still going to find you the best gift. Like, but when I receive a surprise or something, it kind like that is done for me. I don't know how to react. I always feel like super awkward because I, I, I want to be the one taking care of people. And that's the deep psychological reason. Sure. I understand what you're saying. Let me retort by saying this. Get over it. Because there are other people who are just like you who also are much better at giving gifts and receiving them. Um, I, I have no shame in enjoying receiving it, but I also really enjoy, I enjoy just getting you with a good surprise, like a good, happy surprise that makes you smile and makes you feel loved and makes you feel special. It is very difficult for me to do that because like doggy dog, you snoop. I know. You I know I do. all the time. You're horrible at Christmas time. I have had to hide presents at our next door neighbor's house before, which now I'm going to have to find a different spot now that I told you that, because now I know since you're best friends with our next door neighbors as well, that you'll go yeah. over there and ask to snoop through their house and they'll let you, which is also messed <laughs> up. Like, my guy, my you know the the husband over there won't, but the wife was come here, girl. I'll show you exactly where it's at. I know because that's how you two roll. And just tell him to hide it in the Corvette. It'll be look, fine. Tell like I, 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 but I feel like our people listening, like kind of like when it was on the radio. They they, I feel like our listeners didn't like when they agreed with me. They're like, Ugh, Mike's right, but I don't want to tell him he's right because he's a little arrogant. But on this <laughs> one, I'm right. Like, don't ruin somebody's surprise. You are. A grown woman, and you're like snooping for Christmas presents, Katie. That's a problem. Just well, let let the surprise happen. And I think I just yeah, okay. Let me let me let me flip this script on you. How are you going to feel when Chandler's a couple years older, right? And it's December twenty second, mm -hmm. and you catch her with a gift that she's not supposed to have till Christmas. A gift that you thought you just said it yourself. How thoughtful and how. Oh, I love just surprising people with like the most thoughtful, best gift ever. And you're so excited to give it to her on Christmas Day. And you see it with her. You see her with it, sneaking it on the 22nd. Wouldn't that break your heart a little bit? I mean, to me, challenge accepted. I got to hide them better. I understand that. I understand that's still a challenge, but... Are you not also no, bummed? No, I like, will <sighs> be heartbroken. No, and I, like, I, was I so see what you're to saying. Give that for honey, Christmas. honey, you're not wrong. I see what you're saying. What was I, that? I see what you're saying. No, no, before that. You're not wrong. What's another thing? If you say I'm not wrong, what's another way of saying that? Honey, we're moving on. What is it? We're, we're moving on. Come on. Are you no. saying I'm right? You're not wrong. Am I right? You're not wrong. Am I doing it right? I'm trying to get better. I was you're right. Off, you're happy yeah. I better get better with these sound effects. I'm, I'm going to vote these sound effects off the island. I can't tell you how much I hate them. I talk about it every episode. I Over 90% of our audience so voted to keep them. much. I don't know how many of them you paid. Zero. I don't have any money. I just started a job. I'll tell you what. Job. I'll make a deal with you. Are you ready? No. <sighs> Come on. Deal denied. You didn't even know what it is. Don't care. Okay. Bring it on. Okay. No. I will stop. I will stop ruining surprises if the sound effects go away forever. Deal or no deal? No deal. Absolutely not. Nope. Not even a little bit. Sorry. <laughs> and you know what I heard while you were proposing that deal? Yeah, silence. No one cares. It's a terrible deal. I'm not taking that. I, uh, I'm i sorry that I listen to what the people want. And what the people want are sound effects and to and they want you to allow yourself to be surprised. You don't have a pull on that. All right. Number one. Number two. <laughs> number two rest my rest my case like i'm done moving on what's what else you want to talk about today i'm done with this topic all right so um listen last week we started the show by um 
just making a, a, a quick, like a personal announcement. Uh, I'm, I'm still selling vehicles, but I moved from uh, Bob Allen, the Ford dealership out in Overland Park, yep. to McCarthy Chevy and Lee's Summit. Uh, closer to home. Oh my gosh, I cannot tell you how much I'm enjoying the short commute to and from work every day. It's a 15 minute drive instead of a 35 minute I, drive. I enjoy you being closer to home. Mm -hmm. And it's just, and uh, I'm off to, uh, can, can I give myself a little credit here? Got uh, got about three cars out my very yeah, first did. week on the job. Hey, that's cool. For week one, that's pretty, pretty cool. Good. Yeah. That's pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm very fired up there. It, it, it's, it's been great. Met some, met some great, uh, some great new coworkers who I enjoy working with. Everyone's really nice about helping me out in the beginning and things like that. It's really some people think about the the you know selling cars is this like cutthroat business, and there are still some cutthroat parts. But there are still some guys who've been there a while. I think who are a little more cutthroat. But I think a lot of your your this new you know people my mm -hmm. age millennials, you know, it's all about like it's like hey, like I'm obviously I'm trying to get my own numbers up, but if I can help somebody out, I'm going to do it. It's no right. problem. It's 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 really not as cutthroat as it used to be. That's for sure. Well, I feel like you got a lot more inventory to work with too. Like there's more opportunity. Uh, and flexibility. There's there's some technicalities in there. Yeah, there are some technical things like some insidery stuff that I I would be boring to talk about, but. Yeah, there's certainly some good opportunities, but um, I got to, you know when I when I first started at a at a Ford dealership, mm -hmm. one of the things I did was I start I started googling just about the history of stuff, just to have stuff to talk about because it's always nice on like when you're taking a test drive with somebody, it's nice to have things to talk about, things that are interesting that help highlight you know why you should buy whether it's a, uh, this specific vehicle or why you should buy the brand and like so now that I work at a Chevrolet dealership. I kind of looked into the history of, of Chevy a little bit and just mm -hmm. things like that. And, you know, obviously with Ford, you know, Henry Ford, the guy invented the automobile. And so that's, it's, a, it's an iconic brand. Da, da, da. But I started, you know, everyone calls the Chevy's logo, you know, they call it the Chevy bow tie. Mm -hmm. Every, everybody, I think just about everybody knows the, you know, that Chevron on the, on the front of the Chevrolet vehicles is, is they call it the Chevy bow tie. And so I just kind of Googled around and I got to the history of, or the origins of the Chevy bow tie. And it was just a fascinating story. And I kind of want it, it was interesting right. to me, a little dorky, but All I wanted right. to share it anyway. So I love when you have these little dorky moments. I enjoy dorky moments because they're interesting to me anyway. But the, yeah, so here's the, the best article I found on it is this. There's a story about a guy, William Durant. He was the co-founder of Chevrolet. Okay. There's William Durant. And then there's this guy, I don't know if it's Louis or Louis, and his last name is Chevrolet. He's the French. And then he co-founded it with this guy named uh, William Durant. The story, the, the most accepted story of how this bow tie originated was that William Durant was a, a world traveler, and uh, he was staying at a hotel in Paris in the early 1900s. And he noticed the kind of that, that, that Chevron, that Chevy bow tie logo, but think of it as like infinite, like it keeps going like as on a wallpaper mm -hmm. at a really nice hotel in Paris. And so the story went, he actually, I don't know if they ever knew he did it, but he cut a piece of the wallpaper out from the hotel wall and took it and packed it with him. Cause he thought he saw that, that Chevron logo and was like, I think this would be a great logo for the Chevrolet. He literally stole wallpaper off the wall in a uh, hotel in Paris. He did not Paris. get his incidentals back. Let yeah. me tell you that. Right? And, and, and that's the story. Now, for the longest time, that was just the accepted story. Everyone knew that that's the story. However, new reports have emerged, which means that now there is some other proof of some different ways it might happen. And now we might never actually know the origin or idea of how the Chevy bow tie came to be. Right. In 1929, that guy who ripped the wallpaper off, his daughter wrote a book about her dad. Mm -hmm. In there, she told the story about how he would doodle little nameplate designs on pieces of paper at the dinner table. And then she said if things like one night they were having some soup and some fried chicken and he just kind of sketched it. And that's how it came to be. Hmm. Another story comes out that more than half a century later, 1986, the year of my birth, uh, it was that a uh, this this other book comes out and this the 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 wife of Mr. Durant at the time, the guy who the ripped mm -hmm. the wallpaper off, his wife wrote a book like 50 years later, and she said how they were actually not in Paris, but they were in Virginia a year before, and that he was reading a newspaper in their hotel room, and then there was an ad in the newspaper for some sort of coal company or something like that. Hmm. And the coal company's logo had that chevron kind of bow tie look to it. And her story now says that he was sitting there, he goes, 
this would be a good logo for Chevrolet. And then he found, and then somebody who had way too much time on their hand went and looked online at old newspaper archives and found some some newspaper published in Atlanta in 1912 that matched up the dates of when he would have looked at the newspaper. And he found an ad in that old newspaper for that coal company. And, and they're like, and there's sure enough, there was that little Chevy kind of looking logo right there. So now that's becoming the one that so far has been most likely to be proven. Interesting. So how did the Chevy bow tie come to be? I like the story of ripping the wallpaper off. But that's my favorite. So yeah, far. I like that as opposed to, oh, I saw a similar company because then now you're bordering on copyright infringement. If they had copyright in the right. 1900s, I don't know. But they might I, have, but I, I bet you it was hard to track, you know, because you didn't have the Internet yeah. and things like that. I also kind of like that it's a story that we have three stories, but we kind of don't we may never know which what's the actual truth. I kind of like that. It's like how many licks it gets to how many licks it takes to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop. You may never know. I've multiple people have tried that. Well, of course they have. Multiple people have tried, it. and so there, there is. It's like five thousand, like five thousand some, 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 like five. Yeah, I feel like you have to average it, but the total, hard total. Let's find out. No. Hey Siri, <laughs> how many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll pop? Oh, it's awkward when she doesn't read it to you. Yeah, she didn't read it. What's that all about? All right. According to a study by Purdue University, it takes an average of, oh, see, I said 5,000, way over. Apparently, of 364 licks. We'll get you. That seems way short well, to I me. Th- okay, think about it, though. It's just like as many licks until you get to the center. You don't have to lick the whole thing around. Insert jokes here. You think this person just started at like the top at or a certain spot. angle and just and just worked the the half of the sphere? Until the Tootsie Pop showed. That's probably what it is. That person probably has like the most sandpaperiest tongue ever, though. I feel like that's an incredibly low amount of licks to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll pop. Um, I don't even think it's how sandpapery. It's probably super slobbery. I don't think he's going to be. He can't be slobbery. Yeah. He can't be. Yeah. Because all the saliva is going to go onto the sucker. Yeah, but that's what dissolves the 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 candy coating. So you're saying his his slobbery mouth wants the slobber. He's probably like kissing a Great Dane, his poor wife. <laughs> That's so gross. <laughs> I dated kissing. a guy like that once. I was like, nope, we're not doing it. Nope. Sorry, sir. You're out. I don't need to know about other I shouldn't boys say I dated him. It was just like, it, it just was casually made out with a couple times. At the bar. And I was like, nope, tried. Not great. How do you feel about sharing the story about California Pizza Kitchen? Or do you not want to share that story? I really don't. You don't want to share mm-hmm. that one? Okay, great story. I wish maybe someday we'll maybe get her to share someday, it Maybe someday. Not anytime soon. We We're not doing that. We don't feel like that? No. That's just a little too personal. You know, I, I share a lot. <laughs> uh, key in underwear and nipples. All right. I share a lot on this podcast. But there are just a couple things that Katie's going to keep close to the vest. And that's just information for Katie. And me. And Michael. Yeah, that was fun. I enjoyed that. I'm out of ideas, but we're only 20 minutes deep. I don't know what else to do here. Um, well, we could re- bring, bring up the question. I did oh, get some responses. That's right. I'm sorry. I forgot about it because I didn't see it in the notes here. <sighs> we asked you a question at the very end of last week's episode. Yes. And so we got a few responses. And I will say I did ask a few people, like just personally, the DoorDash driver. She did not give me any good answers when she came and dropped off our groceries yesterday. And neither did the Xfinity guy. <laughs> So they both looked at me like I was nuts. What was the question, Katie? (laughs) People are dying to know what the question was. Okay, so the question was, and then I'm going to pose the story. So, (laughs) What's the question? I'm going to tell you the question. Golly. So the question was, is what is a habit that you have picked up from your significant other? Unwillingly. Unwillingly. Like you've been married for a long time, you know, all those things. So. Where, you know, I asked some people, like I said, I asked the lady who delivered my Aldi order from DoorDash yesterday, and she did not have an answer for me. And then I asked also the Xfinity guy when he came to change her modem, and he looked at me like I was nuts, and he just wanted to pet Dolly, so we're doing great. But I did ask your mom, I asked my mom, I asked the neighbors, and then I have an answer of my own. 
Which one would you like to hear first? Just give me some answers already. <laughs> All God, right. You spent 10 minutes just setting up the story. Just All right. Well, my mom <laughs> says she's been with her boyfriend for over 10 years now. Yeah. Her and Scott have been together. They've been together for they've a long time. They've been together since before we started dating. Yes. Okay. So they've been together a long time and they, she has picked up from him. You know, she, she is wired the same way I am is to make sure everybody's taken care of. That's probably where I get it from. Um, and so her grocery habits, she said, you know, really just buying groceries for what you need versus just Armageddon. Oh, thank you. Scott's a hero. Scott's here because you Italians. I know. It's, a, it's, it's not just your bloodline. It's your, it's, it's your origins. The, yeah. you, you Italians. Oh, my gosh. I've got I'm going to have four people around the dinner table tonight. I better get the equivalent of a Thanksgiving feast, even though it's Tuesday and yeah. pizza rolls will be fine. Y'all are crazy. Yeah. Y'all are, cra- I love it though. I go to, when we go, the first couple times I went up with you to Chicago in the dating process and we were engaged, I would leave 10 pounds fatter. Like you the plane, still do. The, the plane would be heavier on the way back. I've gotten better about it because you guys have gotten better about it. Holidays, yes. different story. But Holidays like fourth, are a different story. Fourth of July, we'd go in and, and your mom would be like, well, it's, it's been an hour. Does anybody need a, you know, a, a, a gourmet charcuterie board? Like it's 930 in the morning. No, we're, we're good. Oh, yeah. No. By the time, like, honestly, so the way we typically do Christmas at our house, and this is how it pans out, is like we do our big Christmas dinner, Christmas Eve night. And that's when the extended family comes over. We do a couple gifts there. And then the next morning we do Christmas morning and then we just literally graze all day on all the leftovers from Mm -hmm. the week. So, but like when I say we do Christmas dinner, I mean, we do Christmas dinner. Like it's a tenderloin, it's crab legs, it's mashed potatoes, every side under the sun, all the wine, Mm -hmm. like all the wine, all the wine. And we go crazy. I'm so sorry. And we have appetizers. And then usually when we're up there too for the holidays, sometimes mom has somebody come and like cook for us, like has a guy come. I have never experienced that. Oh. So that's been at least a decade since that's happened. No, it hasn't. I think I went up there once. Maybe it was for Aiden's birthday. She's done that. Aiden is your your younger brother, but for our audience who doesn't know. Yes. Okay. So. um, Okay. So Scott, what he has helped. With the groceries. Yeah, the the not buying everything in the grocery store, simply the essentials. Thank you, Scott. That's, yes. a, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. Uh, what did my mom say? What did Mama <laughs> Barb say? What's something that she picked up from her husband, Mark? <laughs> Barb, I'm sorry. I'm going to share it. Um, peeing with the door open. <laughs> I mean, not when anybody's there. <laughs> oh, good. <There's> that. <laughs> Should we call her? Should we call her and ask her about it? No. Come on. No. We can FaceTime her real quick. <clears throat> All right. We'll give her a call. <laughs> Let me make sure she's home first. So you're telling me now that my mother, and I did not know this until you just now said this, is uh, will, if she's at home by herself, will just whiz with the door open. No, she'll do it if Mark's home too. Okay. But if there's <laughs> guests. No, she won't do it. Okay. Well, that's good. At least she has boundaries. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's rude. She's probably having piss with the door open. <laughs> <laughs> Can't talk. I'm whizzing. God. Can you text her? I'd be like, are you whizzing with the door open right now? No, I'm not texting her that. You oh. can text her that. You got a number. You all text more than I do any more than we do anyway. Uh, so that's gross. Um, all right. And then you, uh, you took an Instagram poll on this too. And I think I did. Answers. So one of them that we got was that Who? in old age being antisocial. That's everybody. That's not. I know. I feel like you're not the only one. That's that's it's, a lot of people. That, that's just is. more wiring of, of, of who you are. And it's, it not a, it's not a bad thing, by the way. No, it, you know, and I think like we have kids, like we have a daughter. I, I mean, we we're what do we do last night? Rage and Saturday night. You came down here and watched soccer and I went upstairs, put laundry away and watched my cult show. I actually uh, I watched soccer whilst also consuming an entire bottle of wine last night. Okay. It was awesome. Who are you trying to impress? I just didn't think I could still do it. Actually, I'm kind of glad we got rid of that bottle of wine, though. That it wasn't good. Sorry, Apothic Red. That's just not my. That wasn't my jam. Those are kind of gross. Let's see. Oh, and I got. We here's another one. Uh, sleeping with the fan on. We sleep with the fan on. Mm-hmm. Summertime. Yeah. Summertime. For Wintertime. Sure. No, but uh, summertime all the time. And you and I are very different sleepers. Whereas you're still 
in the midst of a hot, hot summer, you will still get under the comforter and under the sheet, which me, which to me is borderline. Yeah, when psycho- my feet are out. Which to me is borderline psychotic behavior. Like, it, but my be, feet are oh. out. <gasps> She's calling back. <laughs> oh, she messed up my feet here. Hold on, Barbara. There we go. Hey, what's up? What's happening? You're on the podcast. Hi, Katie. Uh, hold on. What in the world? There we what go. Are you trying to Sorry. Do? Well, we, the the FaceTime. So my phone is linked up to this laptop. Oh. So when she FaceTimed, it made my screen kind of go go blank for a second. But we okay. got it all figured out. Uh, Katie, there's Katie. There's everybody. Uh, tell us about what you did. Uh, Katie said that you had done something uh, <laughs> that she. <laughs> Katie just shared your story. I did tell him. <laughs> He has some questions. What do you? I don't have any questions. I just wanted to hear it from the horse's mouth. Do you, what do you? What's something that Mark taught you? So you know, I had a hard time this week thinking of it, and it finally came to me yesterday that we kind of leave the bathroom door open no matter what. Wait, no matter what? Sometimes no matter what. So the way Katie described it was that you left the door open if you just had to take a number one. Are you telling me that the door occasionally stays open if it's a longer trip than necessary? Occasionally it does. (laughs) Barb, you're such a team player. I mean, truth be told, I'm just coming out of the woodwork right here, right now. (laughs) Sounds like you're dumping in the woods, too. Same thing. There's no privacy. I was quite flabbergasted the first time that Mark did that, and I was like, whoa. Didn't anybody teach you what you're supposed to do in life? And slowly but surely, his habits came my direction. But I feel like that just means you're, you're, you're you guys have been together. I mean, how long have you been together? 10 plus years? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, 10 to 15 years. Yeah. So you guys have reached that point in your relationship where you are, you're, you're a bonded pair. Like there's no, <laughs> there's, a, you're at that point where it's like, okay, you're in it to win it. You've seen me at my best. You've seen me at my worst and you've, You've seen everywhere in between, truly. So. Obviously, the comfort level is there. Exactly. Mm. All right. I'll call you back after the podcast. I just wanted to confirm that. And also, you're disgusting, but I love you. Love you. Bye. Love you. Bye. bye. There we go. There we go. Good job, Mom. Wow. Just dumping with the door open. The f- fact that... Door open? Dump. You you said it was just number one. I Okay. I, I, don't, I don't remember. No. Okay. Well, now the conversation's coming back to me. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. well, here we are. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, can we, did you can, ever can we th- name the podcast that dumping with the door open? <laughs> Probably not going to name it that. If I'm being honest with you, okay. Um, yeah, at the time of recording, I really don't know what we're going to call this one yet. But let me ask you this: Have you, after thinking on this on a week, have you come up with something that you think that you do that you didn't do before meeting me? Um, it's more so. It's a little more deep, like versus something funny. I would say I I take criticism a little bit better now. Like I think I've gotten a little bit more of a thick skin and maybe that's also a combine of like because of all the, the verbal of abuse you're kind of getting used no, to it shut up god could be in stupid mainly because so you so you've been you've been in broadcast forever mm-hmm. literally my i do have a background in broadcast but it's just not as robust right? right but i have the basics there right So, and I initially wanted to be in sort of radio broadcast doing something along those lines. Didn't work out for me. Ended up in nonprofit. It is what it is. But uh, I still feel like I, you know, it's like whenever you tell me what to do, I'm like, no, I know what I'm doing. I've already, I've done this before. Like I'm not, but granted that was 10 plus years ago. So I've gotten better about taking your critiques You know, some of them I'll take with a grain of salt when I know you're just being nitpicky and I just don't need to hear it. But other times like, oh, like one really good example. And I was listening to it on our way on my way home from work. I was listening to our podcast. And I noticed like sometimes like when I do my inflections, I will whisper a little bit and it's hard to hear. And so I'm like, oh, I I need I do need to speak up. I need to kind of project a little more because Mm -hmm. like when we were on the radio, or like if I filled in for, you know, for Jenny, I couldn't hear it, right? Mm-hmm. Because I wouldn't hear the playback. So now I see where your frustration line. I'm like, okay, so he is right here. So I need to do this. So taking your criticisms. 
Fair enough. Then I'm critic. Criti- it's not a critique, not criticism. Critique is Crit- a better word it's, for that. It's a constructive critique. Well, thank you for saying Yeah, constructive criticism. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, well, thank you for saying that. You know what I've learned from you? I would never, before I met you, could I ever, if my life depended on it, just whip up some sort of a quick dinner option. Like but, a pantry dinner? But since since meeting you, no, hear me out on this. Like, I know... I know that if I needed to, I could just grab, I, like, I didn't know you could do this, but I can just grab any sort of pasta, any sort of sauce, and a pound of chicken cut up and cubed up, and then just, just boil the pasta with a little salt in the water, mm-hmm. of course. Boil the pasta, cook the chicken, put it all together, sauce it, and you can, like, the, the combinations are endless. Yeah, I will say you're more of a, a measure guy, mm-hmm. like... You need measurements when you're going by a recipe. Like the first time you told me to put salt in boiling water, I was like, "How much?" And you're like, "A pinch." And to me, that it's really like, freaked me out because I'm like, "Well, hold on, like, but but like, whose pinch? You know, my hands are bigger than yours, so I feel like your pinch and my pinch aren't the same pinch. It doesn't have to be the exact." And when it comes to that particular, the salt in the boiling water, mm-hmm. it does it's, it's preference thing. Well. The whole whole idea with putting the salt in the water, you never put oil in the water. You only put salt. You have to season the water. So that kind of just helps. And honestly, Do you ever put anything me, else in the water besides salt? Like you put like... No, just salt. Okay. You ever like pepper in the... No, just okay. salt. Salt is the only thing that seasons water? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's weird. I believe you. It, sounds, it say, sounds like I don't believe you, but I do believe you. No, they say you're supposed to salt the water so it tastes like the sea. But the sea tastes disgusting. Anyone who's been to the ocean does not want to taste what the sea tastes. I know, sea but it, gross. it cooks real good pasta. That's true. Just so extra seasoning of the pasta. You just got to add salt to the water, which it's really like more like a. I mean, if you had to measure it out, I mean, I literally just dump it. That's crazy. Yeah, because we have, we have like those old school salt and pepper containers, like a little bowl, and you stick your fingers in and pinch mm-hmm. it and add the pinches of salt in there. Uh, those probably haven't been selling well since COVID. Probably but, not. Uh, most so don't come just, to our house. Most people have the shakers, but yeah, we still have the old school, like just these two bowls that are labeled salt and pepper. And you take the lid off and mm-hmm. just sprinkle them in there. But that's one thing I have. Like I can, if, if I have to make dinner, like I can, and it yeah. won't be out of a box. No, yeah. that's pretty cool. I'm pretty proud of myself. Yeah. You were very limited. I shouldn't say, ah, oh, that, that was me. Like I shouldn't say limited, you well, it's were, a fair, but it's a fair critique. You like, had like your staples, right? You had chicken thighs macaroni mm-hmm. frozen pizza hamburger helper i wish you liked hamburger helper it's criminal it's you don't like it you know what else you should like but you don't it bothers me pork steaks pork steaks pork steak you you can go and if or if you go to the grocery store sometimes they're called like pork shoulder blades i think is what they are man you can get a family pack of like six pork steaks for eight dollars I feed us for it's three just, nights. And just if they're fine. Like, they're not my favorite. If we're gonna do pork, let's do like pork chops or pork tenderloin or something. Because I I think a pork steak tastes significantly better than a pork chop or. Pork Honey, tenderloin. all you do is lather it in barbecue sauce. Yeah. And that's why it's so delicious. This actually reminds me. I forgot to add applesauce to my Aldi order yesterday. Oh, Damn it! No. Oh no! What are we gonna do? I don't know. We could, you know take a Sunday and actually venture out of our house. I'm going to the Amazon store today. Are you? What are you getting? I don't know. I just got to go dig through some bins and see Ooh, what's out there. Do they accept Amazon returns at the Amazon store? No, they don't. It's not an actual like Amazon, like run by Amazon. I think it's just some dude who buys like the pallets and then like, and then just sells, sells all the stuff. Just, yeah. Smart. And you like haggle with them. Mm-hmm. So, Oh, are you going to buy like a mystery box? I might. Oh, do, should I get a mystery box? And then we open it on the podcast. I'm here for it. I think it's a great idea. Okay, I'll do it. Yeah, let's do it. All right, I'm going to cool. have to buy two because I don't think I can wait to open one. I'll and wait. we're back to Katie ruining <laughs> surprises. <laughs> Just control yourself. You're a grown woman. I control know. yourself. Good All Lord. right, we're opening a mystery box on the podcast next week. <sighs> Tune in. Get right. excited. No I, question this I'm, week. I'm an, uh, no, I'm expanding on the question from the last week. What is a habit from your significant other that you wish they would pick up from you driving. <clears throat> okay. Mm, all right. I'll have, I have a great answer. Meet me. But we'll find out next week. Right here. Thank you for listening. Am I doing it right? No, nah, but we try every week. Take every care. Day. Okay, bye.